Hello wonderful person, today we're going to be talking about Corot 7B, or just Corot 7 star in general. It's a very interesting object and today you're going to find out why. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. Alright, so this is not actually the object I'm going to be talking about because this is a completely different planet that is much much larger than Chord 7, but I am going to recreate Chord 7 from scratch using Universe Sandbox because it's a system that's really unusual and really interesting. We've previously talked about this when we were talking about Ktonian planets and if you don't know what Ktonian planets are, check it out in the previous video that I made last year. But um, I am going to be specifically talking about this object from a different perspective. Now, Chord 7 is a star that's very, very similar to our own sun. It's about maybe 90% the mass of the sun. So it's slightly less massive, slightly less big, uh, or I guess smaller. And uh, if you were to compare it to the sun, couldn't really tell them apart. They're, they're basically almost exactly identical. But um, this particular star is unusual because it has not one, but two what's known as hot Jupiters. Now, what exactly are these hot Jupiters? It's basically something that we don't seem to have in our solar system. There are these types of gas giants that many, many uh, stars seem to have. These are objects that are very massive, very large, very Jupiter-like, and they orbit very close to the star. And because of the, this reason, they're probably super, super hot. Some of the hottest planets we've discovered are these so-called hot Jupiters. Now, Chord 7 seems to have two of these. It has Chord 7b, uh, which orbits somewhere right around here. And it has Chord 7c, which orbits maybe three times farther away right around here. Both of these planets were confirmed so far. There might have been a third one called Chord 7D, but we now think it might not actually exist. And both of these are more massive than Earth, but way, way, way less massive than Jupiter. So these are technically not really hot Jupiters. But why are they here and why are they so much less massive? And the answer to this is because they're very likely Ktonian planets. Uh, these are basically objects whose massive, massive... Uh, outer shells were basically destroyed by being so close to the star. In other words, they had these massive shells that kind of probably looked something like this. So, um, kind of like this. So here's what ancient Chorus 7b might have looked like. It was a very massive, very large uh, planet at maybe a hundred masses of Earth. And some scientists think it was very likely to be a gas giant not really a terrestrial planet. And some scientists think that it was always a terrestrial planet with a relatively large metal core. We still don't really know. Maybe one day we'll know, but not yet. And with time, it basically lost a tremendous, tremendous amount of its mass and shrunk. And it lost as much as 80% or maybe even 90% of its mass and became what we know today as Chorot 7b. Um, so in one sense, or I guess one way of looking at this interesting lava planet, is that this actually is the core of a gas giant, a Ktonian planet. But in other sense, it very likely is, or maybe is just a shrunk larger planet that lost a lot of its mass and will keep losing mass for many, 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 many years. As you can see, Chorus 7c is a lot better at losing mass because it's actually a gas giant-like object. So you can see all of this mass evaporating in real time. And you can even look at how much mass it's losing by going to the materials here and looking at how many kilograms per second are gone. And if you look at this from perspective of Earths per year. Okay, maybe let, let's do moon per year. It loses about point or about 4% of the moon mass per year. And after millions of years, this really adds up pretty quickly. 
So you can kind of see that these both of these planets are kind of unusually interesting. Now, Corit actually... Well, let's start with the name. Corit is, uh, or was, a name of a French telescope that was working for the European Space Agency, and it was looking for various planets that um, passed in front of their stars uh, between 2006 and 2012. And it found quite a lot of them, but this was one of the more interesting ones. And this, this particular planet, or these two planets, are about 500 light years away from our planet, from Earth. And finding them was actually very unusual and very interesting. So this one we found by looking directly at the sun. And the other one we discovered by looking at various deviations of both the star and the planetary orbit. And the closest object here, Corot 7b, orbits its planet, uh, sorry, its uh, pl um, parent star in about 20 hours. So a single year probably equals to a single day here because this planet is very likely tidally locked and this equals to about 20, just over 20 hours. Now we don't really know exact mass for this world so it's anywhere between 2 to about 8 masses of Earth so I kind of made it average and what we know is that it's very hot here and the side facing the star is probably about 2600 degrees and the side away from the star is maybe about 1800 degrees um, so some people speculated, and kind of incorrectly actually, that this world has what's known as a stone rain. Basically, um, because the, the material here evaporates and then kind of condenses here, you kind of get rock evaporating and then rock rain here. Well, that's kind of true, but not in the way that it would usually is described in, in popular media. The atmosphere here is ridiculously thin. It's like thousands of Earth atmosphere. So the evaporation that does happen is so, so thin that the rain that does occur on the opposite side is practically invisible. It's like minuscule, it's atomic level. It's almost impossible to detect. So it's not really rain at all. It's just atomic rain, I guess, in some sense. Or I guess a better word for it is microscopic rain, so you wouldn't be able to really detect it without special equipment. But what you can definitely detect on this planet is a tremendous amount of volcanoes. Now, because this planet probably does not orbit in a perfectly circular orbit, it probably has a bit of eccentricity, which we'll add right now, um, this creates a lot of tidal effects on the surface. Very similar to our neighbor Jupiter, which I'm going to place a little bit farther away here, um, that has an object by the name of Io. And if you know anything about Io, you know that it's full of volcanoes. It's the most volcanically active object in our solar system because it orbits so close to Jupiter and the tidal heating here creates a lot of these very beautiful volcanoes on the surface. And similarly to this, but to a much more extreme way, Corot 7b experiences a tremendous amount of volcanic eruptions. And volcanoes here are probably so tremendously large that we can't even imagine them. They would be so massive and so uh, large in size that they would probably be size of countries if you were to compare them to something Earth-sized. So imagine the volcano that's about 100 to 200 kilometers and erupts in such a massive way that it probably even shifts the orbit once in a while. And on top of that, this planet also constantly changes its orbit. And that's because as it kind of uh, gets tidally affected by the star, it actually moves a little bit closer and closer to the star. But because it loses mass at the same time, um, it actually approaches the star slightly slower and slower and with time it might actually get stuck somewhere in orbit uh, or it might get sold by Corot 7 star but for now we think that it's just going to lose so much mass that it's going to turn into object like Mercury and at some point just kind of stabilize somewhere. So we don't really know what the future of this planet is just yet but we know that in the past um, billions of years ago it was definitely a lot farther away so it probably started much, much further away, and we also know that it was probably a lot more massive. So it, it was a, a kind of a Jupiter-like object, or basically a gas giant-like object that lost its mass over time, 
and migrated closer and closer to the star as it was tidally interacting with it, losing mass, interacting more, losing mass, interacting more, and eventually reaching the point where it is today. So that's the story of Corot 7b and Corot 7c, and this is the story of this unusual star discovered by the French telescope back in 2011. Anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video, and thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you still haven't, and share this video with someone who might enjoy watching space things and learn through video games. See you tomorrow, space out, and as always, 